First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. We're going to continue having these problems with um, Blog Talk Radio. Just signals losing. Um, they, they, for whatever reason, Blog Talk Radio um, need to do a better job of um, controlling the frequencies and keeping people attached um, by way of the phones, by way of um, the lines, you know, in particular, um, the switchboard and et cetera. Um, for the last few months, it's been real sloppy. I don't know if it's because of the increase of um, the solar flag activities, which are coming in at this particular time period. So we can um, definitely say that it could be based on that. But whatever the case is, as I was saying, so the first order of law is natural law. Now, these are universal principles. Now, we know that the second universal principle is based on Tahuti, or who is known as Hermes Trimagestus in the Greek. Hermes is actually an ancient Egyptian name, which is Heru Mes. Heru Mes becomes the word later on is Christmas, or a form of Heru, which is Christmas which is Christmas, Christ, Christos, Krishna. Um, but we know that who he had these seven universal principles. We know the first law is mentalism, polarity, correspondence, water, which is actually um, based on rhythm, vibration, all right, gender, as well as also... Um, Correspondence. So these are the seven universal laws. Now, we know knowledge of the natural laws must be obtained merely by, can be actually obtained by merely the light of reasoning from the facts of these essential agreements or right, natural agreements between man and nature. All right? So natural law exists regardless of whether it's interacts with positive law. So that means all the two million laws on the books throughout the various federal laws and down to the states within of statute codes, rules, regulations, and ordinances, which is actually colorable law, which is de facto, I put it de facto system. But when law begins to emerge into human consciousness, thought, words, and deeds, um, we can come to the next order of law on this planet, all right? And the most fundamental law of all humans, you know what I'm saying, which is based on survival, is universal principles. But that principle would be 
what's called the law of commerce. And the law of commerce has been in operation since man, you know, they interacting with each other, you know, uh, you know, for billions of years. You know, in particular, based on the forbidden archaeology, we know at least nearly three billion years. And the Earth is only 4.5 billion years old. So we know that we've been here um, at least 1.5 billion years, you know, or, you know, or so, 2 billion years, at least half of the time on the planet in human form. Now, the laws of commerce, you know, based on interaction between man and, you know, man and woman, you know, um, children, families, tribes, nations, etc. Now, we see a good start of this around maybe, you know, 6,000 years ago with Samaria, Babylon, Egypt, you know, uh, where these things was codified and enforced. So if you see um, the papyrus of Ani, in which that has the Prahim Hero text, you know, we have the 147 Confessions of Mayat, in which they becomes the 77 slash 42 um, negative confessions, or what is called the 42 um, laws of Mayat. Later on, it becomes known as the Ten Commandments in your Bible, as one's well portion of that is taken from the Habarabi codes from out of Babylon, all right, and the various other stone um, documents, you know. And so ancient artifacts dating back over 6,000 years ago reveals that the system was so complex that it even included receipts, coin money, shopping lists, manifestos, and a postal service with the medium being they, you know, being in baked clay. You know what I'm saying? So as a derivative of the commercial law, being um, removed from natural law and therefore inferior is then common law, all right? And common law actually coincides with, in a sense, the law of commerce because um, it's based on common sense. Common law is common sense. As a matter of fact, you know, commerce, you know, means service, Give or exchange, all right? So this emerged basically, you know, um, from out of the ancient Kemet. And the Moors took it as they was the high priest into Europe, you know. And so we find it even within um, the laws, you know, coming from actually uh, from Rome, from Greece to Rome, and then into England, all right? So common law procedures were based on the opportunity to face your accuser or the injured party. Now, of course, the Bible shows you this from the Hebrew laws when you hear the tale about King Solomon and the two women who was battling over a child. And King Solomon's solution in the court, all right, was simply to kill the child in order to see who had the most emotional attachment and, of course, the mother yelled the loudest and was the most dramatical, and, of course, the baby was hers. So the woman ended up, you know, stealing um, the child, and she ended up getting punished um, by Hebrew law, you know, saying she got um, got stolen to death, All right? Now, you know, that was an aspect, you know what I'm saying, of that procedure, facial accuser or the injured party in front of witnesses to sort out the problem directly. Right? This process was never intended to include lawyers, though, never include attorneys or judges to screw in their own laws. You know, as this title was based upon the fiction of representation, which can never be the real thing because the word represent means to do over present. In other words, you can't represent yourself. You can present yourself, but you can't do it again. But that's because you sign over your rights when you get in contact with a lawyer, attorney, and he turns your ass over to the system. And so, therefore, um, this is based on that whole scenario, you know. And this is how this government is you know, this um, said government is set up, you know, which is I, actually a corporation, you know. Now, 
let's get into um, what was really set up. Because when you do your research, you will find that only a republic was set up. But I'll get to that in a second. Let's look at de facto law, which is based on colorful law. De facto government, which is this corporation, justifies their existence by the rule of force and coercion instead of the rule of law. Legitimate, lawful, de jure governments of the sovereign people, by the sovereign people, and for the sovereign people do exist by the rule of law. All right? And that's what the law of nations actually was set up about. That's what that was all about. You know, but now, since um, 1933 and the turnover and the formation of um, the United Nations of 19. 19- um, 45, and I'm not saying that um, they can't be good and wish that comes out of it because everything is made up of um, good and bad, agreeable, disagreeable, you know, positive, negative, you know, magnetic, electric, right? But um, when you read up on the laws of nations, um, it was based on particularly, you know, um, different forms of governments, and one of the main forms was that of a republic now. For those who have read information on Aristotle, Aristotle we know based on the stolen legacy of George G. James. Um, He states that Aristotle as well as um, Socrates, Euripides, um, Herodotus, and et cetera, they all sat under um, the ancient masters of Kemet or Temere, all right, Egypt. And they learned from the ancient mystery school. Now, when we're talking about those and we're talking about forms of government, all right, and the form of government in which that um, evolved from out of that, you know, from Egypt, from the Greek, and then into the Roman, um, you know, based on a so-called Roman law, was actually um, a republic, all right? That's actually a republic, all right? Now, a republic, um, as a matter of fact, if you go to the Constitution, the Constitution itself speaks about a Republican form of government. Never mentions, it never mentions now, I'm sorry, it never mentions democracy. I get to a democracy in a second. But a republic is a form of government under a Constitution which provides for the election, election, not selection, of an executive and a legislative body who's working together in a representative capacity. In other words, the House of Representatives, um, the Senate, all of these are supposed to be representatives of we the people. They're supposed to be having our interests, not lobbyist interests, which are corporations. They're not supposed to be bought out by the corporation, but that's what is exactly going on. So therefore, now we have a democracy because now mob rules, all right? And the word democracy is based from the word demokratia, which means ruled by demons, okay? So this is what we have going, have going. Now, in a republic, you have all the power of appointment, all power of legislation, all power to rise or raise revenue and appropriate expenditures and are acquired, required to create a um, judicial system to pass, you know, upon the justice and the uh, um, lawful governmental acts and to actually recognize certain inheritable individual rights such as um, inalienable rights, as is mentioned, or unalienable rights, which is also mentioned um, in the Declaration of Independence, or et cetera. Now, take away any one of more of um, one or more of these um, elements, and you're drifting into the autocracy, and add one or more of these elements, and you drift into a democracy, which is superior to all of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, which they believe is superior to all others. Now,
Now, in a democracy, all right, the rule is um, direct rule of, all right, it's supposed to be of the people and has a repeated tried and actually been re, um, been tried repeatedly without success. So they keep trying to shove um, democracy down our face, and it just doesn't work. All right, matter of fact, you can get a book called um, United States, the Republic is the House that No One Lives In. All right, there's another one which has called The Secret Mysteries of America's Beginnings, Volume 1, The New Atlantis. All right. Now, matter of fact, when we get into um, The New Atlantis, um, we'll find something very interesting. William Shakespeare, i.e., Francis Bacon, if you get the secret of all ages by Manly P. Hall, he speaks about something very important in which that um, he spoke of a republic of wise men. He never spoke of a democracy, but every time someone is trying to relate, um, you know, um, I guess you would say, every time they're trying to relate the teachings of Francis Bacon, and him writing of his new Atlantis, um, they forget the fact that he borrowed the concept of the Republic from um, Aristotle, you know. And if you go to the Constitution, there's Article 4, Section 4, the speaks of a Republican form of government, all right? So a republic, yes. However, a democracy, no. Many of you might remember the Pledge of Allegiance. I Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and actually the real flag is Title Four, United States Codes, um, Chapter One, Section Two, which is forty-eight stars. And the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. All right, the under God was added later by the federal government to um, subjugate all citizens to the government, which is the same government, which is actually government, ordinance, and department. But then it says indivisible with the liberty and the justice for all. Now, the word democracy is not mentioned in there. And like I said, the word democracy comes from the word demoskratia. All right, and which that means ruled by demons <laughs> and those that follow demons. All right, the word classia means power or rulership. Together, they're understood to indicate conquering power, and that's what happened here in the Americas. It is ruled by majority. The word democrat also comes from the Greek word demonia, which means mob. Today in the American system, it means those in power who control the voting masses. In other words, mob rules. The politicians are the mob. When they're supposed to be the republic. Because we, the people, is the public. And they're supposed to be the republic, which is supposed to represent we, the people. Because this government shutdown is not a representation of the people. As a matter of fact, they're treating the people as enemies. 800,000 people have not been paid over the last month or so. Okay? And that's the why, reason why um, our shops and many others are crying loud, saying that um, people, federal, military, and et cetera, are not being paid. And families are suffering. Now, of course, today... You know, there's been a deal put on the table to stop the default. Now, what's this default is about? The default is to China, because China has the largest um, amount of our debt. And there's already soldiers of Chinese posted up in Mexico, just waiting for it to fall, if it does, for they can come in and collect on their debt. Now, you all might not believe that, but no. Is it something in which that will help you out of debt? Well, number one is to be debt-free. You know what I'm saying? In other words, um, try your best not to 
um, have debt over ten thousand dollars. Because over ten thousand dollars, that's what the concentration camps are being built for, which they call the concentration camps, but they are actually debt prisons. And that's why they suspended since nineteen thirty three the state constitutions and turned this into a CI system. All right? Now, that means there's nothing backed by money is not backed by silver and gold or anything of any value, even the pennies. Since 1982, it's no longer copper. There's zinc. The majority is zinc, and not even copper pennies. The ones before 1982 are copper pennies. Okay? The quarters before 1964, 65, are actually made of percentages of silver. After that, various other minerals, elements, but no silver. So therefore, um, silver, copper, gold is no longer back in the coinage, nor the fiat, or FRNs as they're called nowadays. Right? Of course, they would have been called money certificates gold certificate or silver certificate. But nevertheless, that is no longer um, something which is current. Um, the whole goal actually is to crash the system, but to keep things going long enough that it can make a switch or a turnover, all right? Um, back in 2005, George Bush made a deal with Canada and Mexico in which that formed the North American trade, in which that would have been um, the use of the Amero dollar. The reason why that has not gone through, and it's been almost now, sure, nine years, is because Mexico is keep, is holding out. All right? Now, you all might have seen the commercial. If not, look on YouTube, and you will see the commercial in which that was banned here in the United States, but it was shown a few times, in which that shows that China owns the United States, essentially, the roads, the tolls, bridges. The infrastructure of the United States is for sale. And China is buying it up, just like they're buying up Africa. And this is what is going on. So, number one, eliminate your debt under $10,000 so that um, you do not go to a debt prison and you don't never have to worry about that. Um, there's several ways you can eliminate your debt. I was um, looking to learn the 1099 OID process. I will learn um, the, 1090, um, the, um, um, the 1099A and the 1099B and the 1099C, which in particular, 1099C deals with the cancellation of debt. I will also learn um, the UCC process, in which that deals with sending your copyright, trademark, trade name, your private agreement. Well, you can actually keep your private agreement, your security agreement, your whole homeless indemnity clause, your collateral listing, your affidavit for bond, um, affidavit. Um, bond for discharge, your private bond set off, non-negotiable charge back, or, um, as well as also um, your negative avert me, et cetera. This information goes to Jacob Blue, who is now the United States Secretary of Treasury, in order to open and activate your UCC trust account. So after 30 days, you can also begin to start discharging or setting off debt. If there's a way to charge you so like and for example if you're in court they ask you do you understand the charges being brought up against you and you stand there mute or if you say yes even though mute is supposed to mean that you have invoked your fifth amendment that you do not have the right to incriminate yourself however they would take that the judge would that silence is equivalent to fraud or acquiescence that you have acquiesced so, therefore, your silence is equivalent to fraud. So, therefore, they say you're lying. So, therefore, they accept that as you saying, yes, you understand the charge is being brought up against you. And, therefore, they would start to adjudicate, and they would attach your name 
in all caps to that bond, which is actually that statute that they claim that you violated in their so-called set of um, court of law, which is actually callable law. It's not real law. It's de facto. Once again, this statutes, codes, rules, regulations, and ordinances, policies. They're policy. That's all the police is, the policy enforcer. That's all that is. It has nothing really to do with anything of real substance because the word couple means imitation, not real. It appears to be real, but is it? So it has no substance, just like the word Negro, black, and colored. Look up the word black person, and it has no significance or whatsoever in the court of law because it's tied to the word civilist more tools. Even the word more is embedded inside of the word civilist more tools. More tools means dead. It means dead in the eyes of the law, physically dead in the eyes of the law. Okay? So as long as we're under these artificial um, labels and not in full life, and we have not put anything on the public record concerning us stating that Article One, Section Two of the Constitution, which states that we are, uh, which was invoked 1787, in which that they claimed that all slaves were three fifth person, and you have nothing on the record to counteract that, then that means that they also have you as property, and hence property can own property, as we always said. Matter of fact, I've done a DVD on that. Y'all might want to go and check that out. That's www.dralimelbay.com. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y.com. www.dralimelbay.com. Go to um, the bookstore or cultural bookstore section and look up the DVDs and get you property can own property. Very powerful DVD in which that... Um, we went in for almost seven hours breaking down that information on what's wrong with the system and also how to fix it. All right? And how to fix it. All right? So um, common law, even though it's down from law of commerce and even though it's down from um, the law's of nations, or what is known also as natural law, which is also known as universal principles. We see that how they were able to use the law of commerce and transform that into something else, which is known as the Uniform Commercial Code, which is actually a de facto form of the de jure um, form. All right, so once again, um, let's say like this. De facto is UCC. De jure is the law of commerce. But they transformed that or stopped the law of commerce, which is the de jure form under natural law, and put its imitation or its lookalike in position in 1933 with the House Joint Resolution 192 which is the UCC, in which that um, that's when they began utilizing it, but it didn't come into effect until Lyndon B. Johnson time in the 1960s um, with the voting right bill. And it's a bill, so therefore, you know, if you're building something, that means you have to pay. So every 25 years, our so-called rights for Negro, Blacks, and Pullets, and that's what you are on the birth certificate. So you can't say that you aren't because there's no African American on your birth certificate. You're either black, Negro, or colored. So stop playing with me and with that nonsense. All right? So um, you know that's how they have you. You go to the um, IRS and you go to the IRC, which is the Internal Revenue Codes, and you see um, that a child at birth is worth $650,000, which is based on your weight in gold. That child, let's say um, gold, which is now about... $1,200, but if it went down back to $1,000, which it might do, then, but then shoot back up over $2,000. Um, so it's also a good time in order now to buy um, gold and silver because it's low and copper, all right? It's low right now. You know, even though copper just went up, 
um, a few days ago, last week. But, you know, uh, the silver um, is real good. It's about 17 um between fourteen to seventeen dollars an ounce, you know, and at one time it was just a year and a half ago, it was thirty five to almost fifty dollars an ounce. So it's going to jump back up. So it was right now the best time to get that, all right. And we trying to give y'all, you know, ways to come back. And then you will want to do a gold and silver bond certificate. Uh, put that on the record at the register of deeds. Attach it to um, your live plain birth form or what's called your baptismal record. You know, um, along with your affidavit of nationality, your affidavit of citizenship, you know, because I'm Washington, and you need to do those things because that shows that you are part of the indigenous people here in the Americas, all right? Your nationality is the most important thing, the most essential. Then you want to um, gain control over your estate, all right? So your name, your birth name, spelled in all caps, is now becomes your estate, and you want to write up your affidavit based on that and then um, get in contact with the IRS and get an EIN number for that corporation, all right? And, um, you know, then you can utilize that corporation. And then, of course, do a UCC1 financial statement in which that shows the debtor to be the name in all caps and then the secure party or the assigner to be up in lowercase indigenous appellation. All right, so, I mean, all of these things are necessary, and you want to put these things on the Register of Deeds. Um, this is where all of these things occur at. When you go to the Register of Deeds, oftentimes you get a birth certificate or you get a death certificate, or you learn something about some property, something dealing with land or real estate. Well, I just gave you the hand, the word estate. Your real estate is that name spelled in all caps. Now, you don't believe me, go to the Blackstone Dictionary and go to the word dummy. And it basically says that it, um, a dummy is basically a corporation, and it is something in which that someone is utilizing and waiting for the real person to appear or to show back up. And that didn't go to artificial purpose, go to dummy, um, go to straw man or stromios, um, homo stromius. All of these words show you what I'm talking about. That's the dictionary, particularly fourth edition. So, um, oh, yeah, and um, let me say this for those. Um, peace, I've been good. Um, we've been traveling, doing a lot of travel. For, so that's why you haven't heard me on here. Brother Mike Pratt did an excellent job. And so um, we got to give him his props on that, you know. Um, and so based on that, you know, um, we've been doing a lot of traveling. So I've been in Delaware, been in Philly, New York, you know, I'm getting it in you know, um, trying to make extra money, you know, and can't keep the radio show going, you know, for free. Um, it's for y'all free, but it's on the back end, it costs money, you know. So, um, you know, been trying to get um, products um, and things up and running, you know, and, um, you know, keep our system going so that we can keep y'all going as far as with this information and knowledge so that y'all can begin to start doing the right thing and get yourselves from out of the, um, this beast's hands and, um, uh, Come on back to the family, the which is the family of nations, all right, um, which is between sovereigns. And that's the reason why they don't want you to say the word sovereign, because they want to say, oh, sovereign citizen. You ain't no damn, there ain't no such thing as no damn sovereign citizen. Not for us, because we're not even citizens of the United States. We're sorry. Based on the, um, the, the Dress Scott case of 1840. So 1856 and 1857, the 60 says Judge Cheney ruled that we are not citizens of the United States, nor would we ever be. And that ruling has never been um, appealed, changed, or et cetera. So therefore, it still stands true, and this is still taught to every attorney, lawyer, esquire in the country. All right, any lawyer would tell you this. And this is one of the most esteemed cases that they have to learn about in any court of law, all right? It's dealing with the Dress Scott case. Now, you go to the 14th Amendment, the 14th Amendment, um, based on current information, has also has never been um, passed through um, properly, and so it's never been fully ratified. So for us to think that we are citizens, that is sadly mistaken. We are not. This is why the voting right 
is um, every 25 years had to be passed by the President of the United States because the vote and right bill is a privilege in which that we have to pay for in some shape, form, or fashion. So our payment is obviously our taxes to the IRS. All right? That's obviously what's going on because how else can we pay a bill? It, you know, we obviously have to pay it through our taxes. But the fact is is that um, we've been looked at as three-fifths of a human being or three-fifths person in the court of law um, dealing with um, Masonic codes here. Like we always say, um, see no evil, hear no evil. Those are the two things in which that symbolizes the two senses in which that was taken or stripped from us. If I showed you the truth, you would not believe it. If I told you and you heard the truth, you still would not believe it. So, therefore, your two senses, such as seeing and hearing, is taken, but you still have your um, smell, touch, and taste operating in that particular manner. But that's the Masonic Code of the three fifth person. So, therefore, they did the three fifth compromise, in which that also, that's how um, the de facto president, known as George Bush, George Jr., he was able to win the election was because he used the three fifth comp three fifth compromise by saying that we were slaves and therefore um our votes only count for three fifths of the voting right of the voting on privileges I should say. Anyway. So what this shutdown is about once again, the United Um States is in debt, is tremendous debt, because um, George Bush left the country in serious debt, and Obama inherited it, and Obama um, did a stimulus program in order to allow the continuation of the corporation to continue thriving, you know, um, and in return, you know, even though the corporation thriving, you know, even Chrysler was able to make a comeback. I seen all you Negroes out there driving the 300 Chrysler. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, ain't that? You know, and um, that's what you know. That's what's going on. Chrysler was able to make a comeback. You know, since Obama been in position, but yet Detroit is still. Is not in debt now. Supposedly the debt was wiped clean. Um, I won't go into that portion, but we know that Detroit was um, a serious problem just until um, a few weeks ago when they showed um, showed what was actually going on in Detroit, you know, uh, on the TV. Okay, they actually had a program when they were speaking about um, what was actually taking place in Detroit and how um, it was bankrupt. You know, so the cities are bankrupt, and that's not the only city. There's many other cities in which that is uh, right behind it and actually has already occurred, you know. The cities continue saying that they're bankrupt. Um, as you do with um, with bankruptcy, you, you file Chapter 11 or Chapter 13 or whatever the case is nowadays, um, in which that puts on to the IRS and different other companies taking your properties in which that you have acquired from them or from another source. All right, puts it in, is put in a stop on. Well, this is what this um, default is about, all right, in which that's the reason why the Republicans are now coming together with the Democrats in order to bring things together, and that's the only reason is for the default. And remember, to go higher than the ceiling, as they keep saying, the ceiling what is this ceiling that they keep talking about, all right? Well, this debt ceiling, you know, is something in which that we know based on, you know, to China, based on the stimulus program, we're talking about $70 billion in which that if you do fractionalized banking like the banks do, then that's actually a $700, um, excuse me, $700 billion, excuse me, in which that actually becomes $7 trillion, so now, actually, we say that we're about 11 
trillion dollars in debt. But then you have to add the seven million, you know, seven trillion dollars, excuse me, from every bar from China. And if you do fractionalized banking, that's what it come up to. So actually you'd be talking about eighteen trillion dollars in debt. All right? Now, it is said that the Vatican, you know, is going around counseling debt. All right? Now, we don't know how accurate that is, but um, it makes sense because the Vatican, um, through the Queen of England, controls the IRS. It owns you through your Social Security cards. Hence, the Bank of London, um, that is where the goal is, based on all reports. It was that used to be at Fort Knox. It is now at the London, um, the Bank of London, um, part of the property and ownership of the Queen of England because the United States actually never broke away from England. Um, what they did was absurd. The Moors ruled the ship from the inside, and... Um, the Moors, who were known as the Omex, they was the last rulers of this Western Empire, in which that was part of the Ultima Empire, known as the Songhai Malian Empire, known as the Kushite Empire, all right, known as the Empire washed or they dug the money, because we are the Moors in which that dug the mounds and built the pyramids. And dug the mounds was... And see, that's where also people want to get funny at and say, oh, Dr. Munya, we dug the mounds. Well, that's Creole. But in order to build the dirt up and to make it into a mound, you must dig. All right? Um, so um, this is also something in which that is very funny um, based on those who don't have enough information and don't do enough research. But see, we'll knock all that nonsense out the box. Because I study and read dozens and dozens of books a week. Thick ass books. Four, five, six hundred pages books. So um, we're getting the research in. All right, and we're going to continue bringing it to you. And um, as this rap, and show you how deep this rabbit hole really goes. Yeah, right? This rabbit hole ain't nothing. Um, the whole movie Matrix is um, in which that Sophia Stewart did, in which that was robbed um, from her by the um, them, um, them um, brothers um, at Warner Brothers. That was some uh, her joint is serious. All right? The Matrix was serious. That part, man, I just watched that again the other day, and I, I can't tell you how many times I sit down, I, I can never turn the TV from it. Always at the end of watching it because it has so much information in it, especially within the first 25 minutes of it. You know, his name is Mr. Anderson, but he'd rather, call, he'd rather be called Neo. In other words, he changed his name. That's one of the first things that they showed you. And he became part of a nation, which was called Zion. In other words, he was out of the matrix, which is based on the colorable law. The wish that they have designed, the Wizard of Oz. And then you have to follow the woman with the white rabbit on the shoulder, symbolic to also um, Alice in Wonderland. And there's no coincidence, you know, also, um, that was also shown too. You know, once upon a time, um, Alice in Wonderland. So there's a lot of this, um, joints taking place. The movie which that we recommend for you all to start checking out is coming on tonight. It's called Tomorrow's People. It's coming on at 9 o'clock. You know, Tomorrow's People um, is similar to um, the X um, men or mutants, you know, slash alphas. You know, um, all of these shows have been based on these people or us, i.e., melanites, who are actually developing powers. Say chemistry, telekinesis, you know, or so, you know, so forth and so on. And so we want y'all to um, definitely um, dig into that information, you know, and check it out, you know. 
and all of this is important because all of this shows you, if if y'all don't understand what I'm saying, (laughs) let me read something real phenomenal for you from the book, all right, um, New Atlantis, um, written um, by Francis Bacon, known as I.E. William Shakespeare. He says, the philosophic empire would would come again as a republic of wise men. Wise men, the ancients believed, were a separate race, and to be born into this race, it was necessary to develop the mind to a state of enlightened intelligence. The old philosophers taught that the physical birth is an accident. For men are born into various races and nationalities according to the laws of generation. But there is a second birth, which is not an accident. It is the consequences of a proper intent. But this second birth is born by enlightened intelligence out of a nation, out of a race, into an international nation and an international race. It is this larger and coming race that will someday inherit the earth. But unless a man be born again by enlightenment, he shall not be a part of the philosophic empire. This is actually what's taking place. This is what is going on. This is what they base their new world order on. I don't like the way that they're doing it because it ain't necessary you know, to manipulate, lie, cheat, steal, extort, kidnap in order to do this. It's simply by teaching the people the goddamn truth. So when they do all of that, it's not intelligence. That is not enlightenment. So they can't be the Illuminati. For the illuminated ones are those in which that actually continue by the laws in which that governs all this, which is to gain enlightenment through science. Science means to know. So this is actually what we want, you know, to do. And when you talk about the new Atlantis, the word Atlantis just comes from the word Atlantis. And it's the mainland, actually Mexico or Mexico. And the Jordan Islands, Americana. All right, or is known as the Caribbean. All right, the Kishi or the Kushi word as land came by way of the Omex from the word Utal or Utla, which means to vacate, to call New um, North America Utla, which come later at land or Atlantis. So this is where this is actually come from. It came from the Omex, and for those who don't know. When you do your research, you will see a bust of William Shakespeare in which that he is brown-skinned, hence a moor. And based on all the secret teaching of all ages by Manly P. Hall, he says William Shakespeare and Francis Bacon are the same person. So, therefore, that means Francis Bacon was a moor. Right? So, this is a philosophy or a system in which that the Moors brought into Europe and the Europeans called themselves attempted to um, accomplish it, accomplish this. And they're accomplishing it um, in a negative manner, in a negative way. But the original idea or principle of it is not incorrect. It is not. But we got to keep that going. We have to understand that because knowledge is power and it represents an acquired amount of learning which the ancients tapped into, and we know they tapped into, the ability to fully exercise the creative powers that exist in the pineal gland and the right hemisphere of the brain. This gave them the ability to activate and use the other 90% of the mental capabilities of brain power. The brain still remains a mystery to the Western man today, and this phenomenon possessing the will to activate and use that much of the human mental Unprecedented. So the um, tomorrow's people symbolizes us tapping into the right human the brain, tapping into this ninety percent of used brain. So scientists say we only use about ten percent of our brain. All right, and this is what we should be focusing on. All right, now let me explain some things. All right, and it hasn't been duplicated since. And we know that because you can look at the ancient Egyptians. They built the pyramids, and not one race of people on the planet Earth, group of people, whether it's the United States, whether it's British or Britain, or whether it's the Asians, you know, in particular Japan or the Chinese, they all have tried to build a pyramid and cannot do it. 
But some of these keys are still taught, all right, in various secret societies. One in particular is the Rosicrucians. In particular, AMARC, A-M-O-R-C, all right? And I suggest that you get into that and understand what is really going on. All right? Also, Astoria. Now, you don't want to learn from them, then guess what? You can go to a former Rosicrucian by the name of Raon Nefa Amin, or Shekum or Shekum, who was the head of the Anthroposophical Society of the Rosicrucians back in the 70s, and he broke away in order to form the also a set society. You might want to join them. Or, being that um, you're hearing it from me, you might want to join with us, in which that we have what is known as ICRAM, the Indigenous Cosmic Golden Ray Order Melchizedek. All right? In which that we teach these sciences. All right? This is the way we're going to have to get up out of our condition. This is what is meant by put yourself up by your bootstrap talking about your mental capacity. But being that you're melanated, you can always adapt, you know, reform and use more percentage of your brain than all others on the planet Earth. And this is why GMO food and chemtrails and other things was meant for you particularly was to stop that process from occurring, from stop that to stop the DNA from sparking and transform you into tomorrow's people. Because this is also coming from the genetic um Strands too. The DNA strands will also be awakened and open, and you will begin to start having, um, especially now since after um, December 20, um, 2012, um, December the 21st, 2012, you know, um, with these large amounts of radiation coming in from the solar um, from the solar um, system, we will begin to start um, changing. DNA is sparking off now. You can find articles on the internet in which that tells you that solar, um, that CMEs, corona mass ejections, what it calls solar flares, have an effect upon our DNA and cause mutations. And if you're doing Qigong or Tai Chi properly and you're doing all the, um, your other energy modalities, yoga, Kodalini yoga in particular, um, these energies are brought into you um, and it's changing your cellular structure your DNA structure, your molecular structure, okay? So this is what's really going on, taking place, and um, I'm getting ready to head out. I'm getting ready to go watch um, tomorrow's my damn self, all right? And um, we're going to see you all again here um, next Wednesday, so continue chilling and building with us, and um, I'll be back home because I'm still on the road. I'm still at my mom's. I'm chilling with her, you know, in New York, in, in Wa, um, Queens, um, matter of fact, a brother ran up on me earlier today. Um, I was um, in a car navigating, um, and um, he was on his bike, and he ran up on us on the light and said, Brother Aleem, Dr. Aleem Bay, man, what are you doing in my neighborhood? And I said, man, my mom lived right up the street. You know, we dapped each other, showed love, and then no more than five, ten minutes later, we back at the same place, meeting each other again, you know what I'm saying, which is right on the street, you know, where the stores are and everything. You know, it just happened to, you know, he was coming up out, you know, out the bottom floor, and I was um going in, and he came up, and he was like, man, we beat again. And so we just started building it, you know, building right then and there on the spot. And so you all might see that on YouTube. Brother say he get ready to post that. And so that's going to be on YouTube Um. Um, either tonight or tomorrow, so check that out. We did a little, you know, 10-minute interview uh, for those who's on Facebook, um, so check that out. All right, we all say peace to y'all and much blessings. We love y'all. We out. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. 
there's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know, we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.